Hey Gum TV, this is Charlie, an album cover Anderton, and this is my audition video for the Class A commentator. Um, I think I'd be a great addition to your team there at GOM TV because number one, I have an extreme passion for StarCraft II. Um, ever since beta I came out, I've seen people fight, sweat, and cry for StarCraft II. And because of that, uh, I have an extreme passion for uh, not only StarCraft II, but esports and spreading esports uh, in general. Um, that topped with I've been doing improv, improvisational comedy for three years now, which is basically acting without a script. So I'm pretty good with rolling with punches and uh, like when things uh, don't always go the way you want them to go and technology craps out on you, um, I, I definitely feel like I could handle that really well. Um, I am not living in Korea right now, but I would come to Korea um, without a doubt, even just for an opportunity to work uh, with such a great production uh, as GOM TV. I really, uh, really like uh, y'all over there, and I would just be uh, honored just to be given an opportunity. So uh, without further ado, thank you for this opportunity, and let's jump in the game. In the 2 o'clock position on Lost Temple, we have Kefka, the Red Protoss. At the 8 o'clock position, we have Zago, the Blue Zerg. Now, Kefka was the one that actually I got this replay from. He posted a pretty big pack of replays on TeamLiquid.net. And I've seen a couple of them, so I know, um, you know, I know he's not some bronze level scrub <laughs> posting on Team Liquid, uh, and he's he's got some pretty good strategies and pretty entertaining to watch. So I hope you enjoy the game. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and sp uh, start scouting on Nine Pylon, and really, if you're playing against Zerg, that is something that's never a bad idea to do. Uh, you know, I think we've all had our fair share of losses to a six pool, so I know that's ingrained in a lot of in a lot of players, myself especially, to go ahead and scout for that. Because if you scout any sort of cheese, you can hopefully uh, try to go ahead and stop it. But we do see that Zago is not going to go for any sort of cheesy <clears throat> build, at least uh, not yet, and so he's not going to go for any sort of fast pool right now. Um, the map is, of course, Lost Temple, so if he wanted to go for a hatch first, he could because of the relatively small choke point here leading to your natural, but he's actually going to throw down his spawning pool at, uh, at 14, so <clears throat> pretty economic build here, and actually the scout um, of Kefka getting, getting taken out, so... You know, any time that you can do that and take that scout out, um, you know, you can do you can do a lot, even just to mess with your, your opponent's mind. If Zago had taken that scout out and then, you know, canceled the spawning pool, he could have gone for hatch first. And there's no way that, that Kefka would have known. So we do are going to see uh, Zago go ahead and throw down that hatchery. Um, it seems that Kefka is playing pretty standardly at this point with his uh, one assimilator and one gateway. Uh, looks like he is going to throw a cybernetic core, so pretty, pretty standard here from Kefka. Nothing too crazy here at this point. Um, now, pretty good scouting uh, patterns from Zago. He, he sent his first overlord up here to the top instead of right here uh, to at the, the nearest expansion, and of course Kefka does see this hatchery. Um, but the the reason why I like this overlord scouting is number one you can end up with an overlord right here at the top so to scout any drops usually that's better against Terran because Terrans drop more but still regardless it's good and then also with this first overlord that you see now you can park right over here right over the natural expansion you can see um, when your opponent expands this scout is going to be taken out and you can also just keep tabs on, you know, you can float it over here towards the back, see how many workers they have, um, know when they mainered, stuff like that. Very valuable information that, of course, the high caliber players can can use uh, and make so much more valuable um, than a lot of us can. So uh, it looks like Zago is going to try to get up here in his drone. He can actually get past that if he clicks on the minerals, and he does, actually. So... Um, the building right here uh, that was building uh, just got cancelled actually to keep Zago from scouting that. Um, that's actually a trick you can do uh, for any of you nubs out there is you can with your worker 
workers can ignore all other units if they're mining so what you do is you just click here on the minerals um, to tell them to move like as if to mine them and you can go ahead and um, like just straight move through this zealot so very good there by Zago and this is of course going to be taken out uh, by the stalker and Stargate actually started with a plus one uh, air attack upgrade so probably could see some Phoenix play or even uh, a quick quick void ray really good uh, and it has the potential to be a powerful opening against Zerg uh, anytime you do this you have to do damage because of course if he goes for uh, Stargate, that means, and he's really not even throwing down any other gates, he really could do that as well. Uh, you're sacrificing a lot on production of other units. So you're gonna have a really small army. If you don't do a lot of damage with this attack, whether it be uh, Void Rays or Phoenix, or he's actually starting a fleet beacon. Um, all right, he's actually starting a fleet beacon. So in this case, carriers, if you don't do a lot of damage with uh, these carriers, then really you've just lost everything because not only are you not doing damage but you're behind as far as the units go and all around it's not good so we can see Zago is um, he's really starting to get pretty afraid right now throwing down uh, another spine crawler he's already got three at the moment so I guess he thinks possibly um, I, I, I don't know obviously he's not thinking DTs because there aren't any um, the layer is <clears throat> just now a little bit over in the halfway done so He's, uh, he's freaked out about something. So, and as soon as this Fleet Beacon finishes, uh, we'll have enough minerals to go ahead and start that, uh, that carrier. So, carriers actually, I'm not sure if it, they're the unit that benefits the most, um, throwing down this Nexus as well. But carriers, the return value for a single upgrade on attack is ridiculous. I think they get something like 14 or 16 uh, more damage Per interceptor shot, because um, in each interceptor shoots twice, that you actually do a lot more damage with with just one upgrade. So throwing in a couple of uh, more gateways, I like that. Going to need to get his production facilities up, uh, up and running. Because here at the moment, we do even have just a roach one that just finished here for Zago. He is completely clueless uh, to everything going on. So. He's going to possibly get up here and scout. This Zergling actually could get up here and see everything. Uh, if he didn't... Uh, did he... He actually did not see that. So that, if that had been just a couple of pixels higher, would have been able to see this Stargate and, of course, would have been able to react uh, responsibly. He is throwing up a Hydralis Den. So I know he didn't see it because he because I checked, but he's definitely, uh, of course, going to complement his Roaches with the Hydras. Uh, really not the best uh, unit composition that you want against carriers, and his first carry is moving out across the map. Needs, like I said, he needs to do a lot of damage.